and our responses, particularly in the light of, of uh, fresh water and carbon. Um, and, and that's fantastic and, and, and essential, of course, but it's very easy to lose sight of, of a couple of things. One is that um, people need to be able to farm profitably, uh, they need to be able to farm productively, and they need to be able to fit farm systems to the, uh, the land and the climate and the people in a way that um, provides the best outcomes. Um, and that is, and this is where I'm heading, that, that is a complex jigsaw puzzle. Right? It's, it's not easy to kind of say, um, how, do we, how do we fit a farm system best to the land and everything else that goes around that. And it's very easy in today's world of sort of 20 second sound bites to look for what's the silver bullet. Oh, we just feed, feed our cattle seaweed and we'll be right, or whatever else it might be. And we know that farm systems are complex, they have feedback loops, it's not that simple. Uh, and today we have some people in the room who have some fantastic experience and some learnings from working through farm systems in both a, a research and a practical way. So we're very excited to, to hear from those people. I'm going to invite Graham Ogle to come up now, and um, Graham's going to jump up and down during the day, uh, introducing people. Uh, and uh, I guess Graham has done a lot of work um, in recent weeks, working with many of you, organising today, and uh, on behalf of Rosia Systems, um, we're very grateful for that work as well. Thanks, Graham. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Rosie has been planning to run this workshop for quite some time and it's um, a real pleasure to uh, have a room full of all the people we want here for this workshop. Um, <coughs> what I want to do is just cover why we're running the workshop and a little bit about how. Um, I think this is a, a, a chance for... Rosie has been looking for the chance to have a bit of a... Um, and I found the word the other day, a policy refresh. A strategy refresh, sorry. Um, very cool word. Uh, and we thought, what a better way, what better way is there to have a strategy refresh than invite all the right people, and you're, we think you're all the right people, to, to a venue and talk about what we see as really valuable to farmers. What is value? What is value when we say, of all the things we could provide a farmer, what are the valuable things? I, I guess I started my career, my idea of that uh, really was forged out of when I started my career in the 1980s, which meant that I had two decades of excruciatingly low product prices to work with for farmers. Uh, I remember sitting with a farmer one day, he was in trouble, the farm was going to get sold up, and I thought, if we get $35 a lamb, you'd be right. And of course, the markets weren't delivering that. N now, you can adjust that by whatever you like, whatever inflation index you like. The CPI would mean that farmers today would be getting $55 a lamb. And I imagine our budgeting would be even more difficult today given the increase in costs. Dairy farmers were getting $2.40 a kilo of milk, milk solids. I mean, it's almost unheard of. And if we ramp that up by the CPI, we'd be talking about a payout today of $3.70. So this, this was a sort of the anvil that forged my early career. And uh, going out to do things for farmers that were of value, the biggest value we could do for farmers then was increase their profitability. And that uh, started to address all the other problems that were on the farm. So, <clears throat> when Rosia set out, as we, we did uh, in 2004, uh, as a group dedicated to agricultural uh, software development, often we sit around and think, is our strategy aligned with where the value is in the industry? Are we aligning our investment and resources where the value resides in the industry? So what we're going to do today is we're going to think how might we align our investment with what top farmers are saying is important to them. And I can't think of any better way to start this workshop than listening to some top farmers. So that's what we're doing. 
I think uh, consulting is also an extension of farming, and we'll listen to consultants after that. The farmers that we'll listen to have been through some process of change or intensive planning. Um, and it's from those discussions that we hope you'll pick up some things about what they value. And maybe uh, a, a successful outcome of this workshop is if you go home and think, hey, maybe we need a strategy refresh as well. I'd like to now uh, introduce James Allen. Um, I'm, I've been doing a little bit more with James in the last uh, last 12 months, and um, I, I've heard James talk, and I really appreciate his insights into into how we shift farming systems. So, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce James Allen. Yeah, look, uh, yeah, thanks, um, Graham. And uh, just before we start, a couple of points, really. Um, so I'm part of Ag First in the Waikato here, but uh, roam around the country a, a little bit. Um, but I do want to acknowledge Bob. You know, Bob's been part of our team in the Waikato for a few years now, and he's. A, we just. It's a good reminder to me about um, consultancy. It's all about people, and it's about passionate people. And if there's one thing that Bob is, it's, it's passionate about his work, and we love it. And uh, we need more Bobs in this world. Um, the other thing I just want to note is uh, putting my other hat on, um, President of Field Days. Mr Neil accosted me uh, walking up the stairs today. One person congratulated us on the Field Days and, and Mark was just starting to question our, our car parking strategy. <laughs> Uh, no, no. So I'd just like to acknowledge that it was the biggest day ever, and uh, 44,044 people, which might have may have had an impact on the uh, car parking ability on the Friday. But uh, when we uh, had a debrief and dug into it, it was actually the um, the increase in the the number of EVs that came to field days, and most of them got stuck, and the others went flat, which caused the car parking issues. <laughs> So, uh, so we've done it, Mark. We've resolved the problem. We'll have it sorted next year. So I'm um, going to try and stick to task. Um, and I, to do that, um, I focused on the, uh, the questions that Graham's given me, um, stuck to those, and worked through them one at a time. So a focus, uh, my day-to-day my -day work is probably more on, on the team in the Waikato and Dairy. Um, so, is, is there scope for improving our farm systems? Absolutely. Um, are dairy farms on average optimised? No. So, how, what are we talking about here? Um, I, I think about it, when I started my career, it was about um, how do we produce more? And then it was how do we produce more at a profitable focus. Then it became, how do we produce more profitably, but also sustainably? Now, now it's becoming, how do we produce more profitably and environmentally sustainably, and uh, with the labour sustainability lens on it, and what's fit for the consumer? So the needs are, are changing and evolving um, all the time. And uh, as farmers and consultants, if, if we don't evolve, we'll, we'll be left behind. The mag magnitude of uh, what those challenges are varies significantly between farms. And, and we just can't, can't forget that. Even if the, um, the land labour resources uh, or the land resources are the same, everything else is different on each farm. The drivers, the people, the skill set, their, their debt levels, all of those things. So it's an individual focus. So, yeah, apologies, you won't be able to see the, the detail there. But if we break it down, you know, to me, what, what are the metrics that matter? You know, let's focus on the people side of things. We're, we're hearing every single day, uh, not just in farming, but uh, in New Zealand, we, we're short of people. And the message I'm hearing fairly clearly is... Um, that's not going to change. The, the, the government has a focus on increasing productivity. The Productivity Commission came out, said you need to do better. The government's focused on that. Um, 
end. Maybe I've read the signals wrong, but I'm not anticipating uh, things changing quickly in that space. So how do we look after our people? How do we make sure they're enjoying what they do um, uh, and getting more productive along the way? You know, I, I really enjoyed um, the opening, opening speaker from Fraser, uh, the comments around uh, people management and what's important, and to me that's just fundamental. So what are the measures? You know, Graeme, you said, what are the measures that we start thinking about for people? Uh, to me, it's um, some of the basic stuff. You know, how many hours a week are we working on farm? Um, how much, what's our retention rate like? You know, in the dairy sector, uh, historically, the retention rate has been um, low to abysmal. You know, uh, turnover of um, 30, 40, 50% per annum. That's changing. Um, and it's changing quite quickly because of uh, a couple of issues. Um, the ability to, to buy a farm, um, not everyone has that as an end goal now. So therefore, how do we make sure that uh, they stay on farm and uh, enjoy what they do? So staff retention is a key measure. Um, uh, hours worked, but then productivity. One, one of the ones we're thinking about is um, labour productivity. 30. Um, 30 hours, no, 30 kilograms of milk solids per hour worked. You know, these sorts of metrics that are coming in. How do we measure it? How do you automate that measurement of those, those numbers? Um, planet. Farmers are, you know, we're talking today, the farmers in the, in the room here, I would put in the top 5% of farmers in New Zealand, um, proven by uh, what they've, the results on farm, but also by their peers. That's not the case, and Bob alluded to this. Uh, we have quite a wide range in skill sets and understanding. And so the metrics we're looking at um, for planet, you know, what are the greenhouse gas numbers? What are the nitrate leaching numbers? Um, the, the end surplus numbers? What's the sediment running off that farm? What's the, um, the biodiversity count on that farm? How are we measuring this? How are we monitoring it? How are we doing it effectively and quickly? And then we come to the bottom bit in terms of um, performance. I've got production, financial, and management. Uh, you know, we've heard a lot this morning around, you know, how much grass can we grow? Um, how much grass can we harvest? Absolutely. Um, what else is out there? What are our, what's our animal performance doing? Our herd performance, but also our individual animal performance. Kilos of milk solids per cow, per hectare. What's our our peak production per day, um, what's our drop-off in, in production per week after that. There's any number of metrics you can get to in a dairy system, and sometimes the, the amount of data is, is our challenge, and how do we manage that. Um, financial metrics, I won't dive into them. There's any number of metrics we use, and we, we tend to use uh, dairy base as a historical measure, but more, more importantly, there's any number of systems out there now to look forward in terms of how we measure and monitor on a monthly basis. And then down the bottom, um, what is uh, probably the most important in, in that slide there is, is the management side of it. How do we benchmark and, and evaluate the management skill set we've got? Bob said, what's the most important thing we've got in our, our farms? It's the farm systems. And the farm systems become, come down to the, the people within it. And I think a, a, as a whole, we're probably remiss in the, um, the skill set that we've got in the transferring good systems and processes between managers and staff. And we often find, well, for me, the best thing I can do as a consultant when we start working with a farm is to make sure we've got the best farm manager we can possibly get on that property. And if we get that right, um, the farm owner's job is easier, our job is a whole lot easier, and uh, the thing works. If we get it wrong, we've got years of pain coming up for us. So we like to get quite involved at that stage in making sure we're invested and owning the person uh, who goes on that farm, because that's fundamental. So what are the systems, what are the skill sets, what, what's the governance strategy around that, and that management um, part of the farm? Hard to benchmark, but to me, the most important part of the farm system. Go back to the good old days of Farm Management 101. It's around the interaction of land, labour and resource to get the desired result. Don't ever forget that labour component. 
So, in an ideal world, what would we like to, to um, measure and monitor, and how? How would we do it? So, just as a, a really quick snapshot of how we're doing it now, uh, on the dairy farm side of things, this is the sort of information I want to get almost on day one. And uh, when we start working with a client now, I, I politely demand, request, you know, third party access to, to most of these things here. And what it means is, Graham, I think you talked about becoming quicker and more efficient. I can um, uh, access this information before I set foot on the farm. And, you know, we don't have to spend time understanding what the covers and the growth rates are and X, Y, Z. I expect that information to be loaded in and ready to go. Now that's the expectation. Expectation doesn't always meet reality. So just a word of warning. What, what would help? What would help? What are the challenges we find? Um, forecasting. Uh, how do we forecast, you know, <laughs> what, what, what's the weather going to do? You know, it has such a major impact on, on our lives and we still struggle with that. We've got tools like Farmax to help interpret what it means um, going forward, but I think um, how do we translate the, the, that forecast into impact not only on farm, but for the, uh, for the district, for the region, for the nation in terms of the overall impacts. I do think we need to get better and smarter around um, how we collect the data, how we interpret it, how we analyse it, and what we do with it. Because, and it goes back to one of the points down the bottom, we, we, we are starting to get more granular about the data we collect, which is great. I think, uh, Annie, you mentioned uh, use uh, dams and lambs, matching them up. You know, that's just one example. Um, a few years ago, body condition scoring, you know, having a, your cows at condition score five at start of calving, cover of 2200, that's almost the golden rule for dairy farming. And if, if you haven't got that now, you're, you're in trouble going forward. You know, a few years ago, it used to be what's the average, and then you might break it into a few mobs. Today, we're doing um, what's the individual body condition score for each animal, and then we're drying them off based on that information. Great. That's, that sort of behaviour change is, is happening and it's going to carry on. I was on a farm yesterday. He's a great farmer, super enthusiastic, regrassed about oh, half the farm in, in the two years he's owned it. He's getting really confused about which paddocks have which grass, how well they're growing, X, Y, Z. To, to Blair's point, he's rather than having all the systems in a computer, he's um, going out and putting... Um, cattle uh, ear tags on each paddock on the gateway to say, well, this is what I sowed on each paddock and which year, so we won't forget. So sometimes it's, yes, it needs to be here, but man, having it visual is so important. And I think we need to be getting into this area of reporting by exception. There is just so much data coming, and man, I don't think we've even started on this. So it's going to get too complex if we really want to make the most of it out, out of our farms. So don't tell me um, what, um, what's going right. Tell me what's going wrong and what I need to do about it. And we're getting to the stage at an individual animal uh, level and a paddock level, and soon I hope we'll be sub-paddock. I mean, even today, I struggle to work out how much grass each paddock is growing and what we need to do about it. That, that should be old technology by now, and we're still struggling. So, I've got the three minute call, which is now two minutes. Um, it's closing thoughts. Look, it's all about the people. Um, yes, w w the technology is out there, but what's holding people back from more monitoring, doing a better job, and, and making it happen? And monitoring, I, I take Blair's point, it's hard, it's time consuming, and you've got other things to do. Yes, we know you should do it, but you know, when there's stuff happening, you've got floods or whatever going on, there's stuff that needs to be done that takes a back seat. So, um, and, and farmers generally don't like sitting at a computer. They go farming because they like farming. They don't like sitting at a computer, general rule. 
So to me, whatever you, has been developed or going to be developed, if you can't do it on an, on an app, on a phone, you've probably missed the market. But also embrace it. You know, there's some pretty cool stuff coming through. And, uh, you know, who would have thought five years ago that you, we, we could sit here and shift our cows uh, on, in paddock 57 in Morrinsville uh, on our phone and uh, just by the collars they're wearing? It's here, it's live, it's happening. And farmers, if there's a, a value proposition, they will uptake it really, really quickly. Two more points. Um, farming should be becoming, uh, what is becoming more complex, technology should be making it simpler. I'm not sure it is. Um, we're not great at replicating our systems. Bob mentioned this, I'd just like to, to emphasise that, because that's how we take our best managers and replicate them again and again and again. And if we had a factory in town, that's what we would be doing. We'd take on a new manager, but this is the system you follow. Final point, you know, the challenges are significant, but to me, I, I think we're in quite an exciting phase of agriculture, and I think the opportunities are even greater. Leave it at that. Excellent, James, and uh, I like the way you put my questions up to you and then you answered them. Um, that kept us on, on, my tr on track with me. So I guess, stand in front of the microphone, just a, a few reflections on the day um, and, um, and I'll keep this brief. Uh, so the first thing uh, I thought about was the messages from our practitioners in the morning sessions. So the people, the farmers and the people who are working closely with farmers. Uh, and they talked about unashamedly stolen from your slides, folks. Um, people, planet, performance. And I've just kind of expanded those out a bit more. We talked about the importance of people. And I think we've reflected on that during the day. There were questions about what's stopping data interoperability. And the answer was people. Uh, there were questions about how do we get adoption. Uh, we talked about the need for specialists. And so a lot of it comes back to the importance of people in our thinking. Uh, mathematical equations are great, but people are very important. Um, planet, we've talked about, the need to make sure that we're farming within the constraints that we've got and doing the right things for our land and our planet. Performance and I've added and productivity there. And you know, Martin's questions are good ones. We we want to include we want to we know we often fall into talking about in improving production, right? And we know we don't want to talk about improving production. We want to talk about improving productivity, and the measure of what we're getting out. And at the bottom line measure of that is profit, as long as the, the other factors are equal um, for the amount of inputs put in and for the uh, amount of emissions going out. Um, then something that I got out of those farmers who talked this morning is their strong emphasis on planning, on the processes that they and their teams follow, the communication of those processes, and the precision with which they go and measure, they, they identify what are the important things for them to measure in their systems, and they go and measure them. And to, together that, you know, that was talked about as systematization, turning things into a system that's repeatable, and I think that's, that's key. So some great, great learnings for me in those areas today. Um, we talked, for those who are involved in um, research and in governance, we talked about capabilities, and I guess my reflection, um, thinking about uh, some of the presentations, was the amount of amazing capability that we've had leveraged in this sector over many years in our science R&D and all of the, the things that underpin that, um, some fantastic capability. And I think that goes to the heart of what you were talking about before, Graham. Um, other countries are investing in their core competencies and in New Zealand we've made a lot of investment, not, not enough, but a lot of investment in building capability in pastoral agriculture and its underpinnings, which has been fantastic. 
there's some really valuable collections. We talked about the virtual climate stations, we talked about S maps, and we've talked about some of the other collections that are out there. Um, I didn't want to just say databases because there's a lot more than just databases. Um, almost every speaker talked about the opportunity to collaborate further, to engage further, to use data from other sources, whether that's climate stations or soils data or any of the other data sets that are potential to use, um, and the opportunity to engage together. And we see that. We see that in some of the collaborative projects that have been done. We talked a bit, little bit about data integration, and to me there's some real benefits in being able to link data and to have common identifiers and all of those necessary things that make it easier to connect the dots between systems, and also consistency in meaning and interpretation, and are we talking about the same things? Uh, and then this afternoon we talked about our, and you, you know, I'm playing some fun games here, but we talked a, we talked a, a little bit about um, uh, sensing. We started off by talking from space, which is very much built on sensing technologies. But I thought, particularly when I was listening to Dean as well, there's a, there's, that's another great example of sourcing data uh, so that farmers aren't having to go and measure it. You know, imagine if you as a farmer, and farmers did have to do this, some still do, go and attend every sale yard that they can so that they know what the prices are. Try and keep their own little book so that they know, you know where prices are heading. But there are tools that can deliver that data just as space can deliver pasture cover data. Um, and, and I think we saw through the work that Ravensdown and Balance are doing a bunch of other sensing and use of predictive tools to take some of the effort that farmers would have out of sort of capturing data and making sense of it. A lot of the tools we looked at, uh, including FarmMax and including the tools that, that Ravensdown and Balance have been working on, have been around making predictions that help people make either recommendations or decisions, and that's really powerful. And I think there was, there's been some, again, a thread of discussion going through around, well, how do we then extend those services out? If you've got other, other crops you want to measure with, with space, how do you do that? Can we extend those services? If you've got some data that's in FarmMax or one of these other tools, how do we make it available? How do we make data flow into FarmMax? I think my other observation is that we're still at the stage where many of these tools maybe space being an exception here, require the assistance of somebody, a specialist, to help interpret them. Right? Whether that's a, a rep or an agri-manager in a fertiliser company, and we know there's good reasons why we should be doing that, uh, or, or a consultant to help you with farm max. And, and I'm not saying, you know, we know those roles are essential and important, but if we to move to support for adoption and use, we need to think about how we kind of leverage the time of those people, right? So that they're doing the things that only they can do and that our tools and our systems are easier to use so that um, specialists don't have to get involved at every step in the way. So I guess that's my kind of reflections on what we've talked about today. I hope that, like me, this has been of interest to you, that you've had your eyes opened to some interesting things that people have been doing and some opportunities. Um, I think it's been great to have the input from the farmers and the practitioners to kind of ground truth what the problems are that we're trying to solve. And what we're hoping is that this conversation continues on so if you're on Zoom or if you're here in the room, hopefully you've made some contacts or you've made some notes of people you should talk to, and we'd really encourage you to continue to do that. If there's any way that Rosier can f facilitate those discussions for you, we're happy to do that as well. So thank you very much. <laughs>